Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly webcast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation, and chronic daily migraine survivor. I am here with Dr. Vincent Martin. Hi, Dr. Martin. How are you? Doing great. Dr. Martin is the director of the Headache and Facial Pain Center at the University of Cincinnati, and he is also the president of the National Headache Foundation. Today, we have an awesome topic. Today, we are going to talk about white matter lesions that are seen on MRI often in people who have migraine. Uh, there are a lot of people who talk about this online after they have had an MRI and they see this, and sometimes it causes people anxiety. They want to know what it means, and uh, we want to talk about everything we know related to white matter lesions. It's also called white matter disease, and Dr. Martin deals with this all the time in his practice, so we are going to pick his brain. So, uh, Dr. Martin, let's start by just talking about what white matter lesions or white matter disease is. Well, um, before we talk about that, it's often found incidentally on mm -hmm. MRI scans. So usually we'll do an MRI for usually another reason. Right. Like we want to make sure there's no, no other underlying cause for the headaches, like, you know, a tumor or something else. Right. And they find these white matter lesions. And basically what it is, is it, they're just little white spots that you see on the MRI scan. Um, and they're called white matter lesions, or in some cases, they're called white matter disease. I don't like the word disease, mm -hmm. because it really, in this situation, they really don't reflect a disease. Right. So you brought up um, that they are found incidentally, and I do think that causes some confusion for people because they'll go in, their doctor will recommend an MRI because they have migraine, and they come back and they have white matter lesions, um, but they're told, you know, not to worry about it. And so the, the person sometimes is wondering, well, what were they looking for? So what are they trying to rule out when they send you for an MRI? Well, as I said before, thing, things that other other causes for you know for headaches, things like um, like a brain tumors, and in some cases you might pick up an aneurysm of the brain, which is an outpouching of a blood vessel or a malformed blood vessel or um, some other cause for the MRI, for the uh, headaches. Okay, so what um, what? does cause the white matter lesions in a person that has a history of migraine? Well, it's probably a, a disorder of the blood vessels. So it, it can occur in situations where you have migraine and you have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that high blood pressure can damage the very small arteries of the, of the brain and lead to low blood flow. Or it can occur in situations where there's low blood flow. In fact, there are studies that suggest that people who black out a lot have a higher likelihood of having these white matter lesions, which in that situation, we suggest it's the disorder of the autonomic nervous system. The, the fight or flight nervous system is just, is just messed up. And they often people run very low blood pressures and oftentimes they'll have frequent attacks of blacking out. And it, so in that situation, there can be low blood flow to the brain too. So either from too high blood pressure damaging the small arteries causing low blood pressure or lo low blood flow to the brain or low blood pressure causing frequent attacks of blacking out and low blood pressure because the blood pressure runs very low and often drops when you stand up. Okay. Uh, what percentage of people with migraine have white matter lesions on MRI? Very common, probably in the general population, it runs about a third, but I can tell you in my headache practice, it might be pushing anywhere from 45 to 50%, almost one in one in two people have white matter lesions. Um, and, and they get quite concerned about this. There are certain subgroups of patients with migraine, for example, that might be more prone to, to develop white matter lesions. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, women that have mm -hmm. migraine are more likely than men. So men, for some reason, don't get these white matter lesions as much as women do. And then patients who don't have migraine with aura, which is like different than what you would normally um, think would happen, because usually anytime people have aura, they have a more severe um, you know, uh, have, have more uh, consequences to their to their migraines. But in this case, it's patients with migraine 
uh, without aura. And then uh, people who have more frequent attacks are more prone to it. And then if you do have white matter lesions, and let's say your headaches are mostly on the left side, and then mo most of your white matter lesions are also on the same side as where your headaches are more, more prominent. So that kind of argues for the fact that maybe migraine over a long period of time can sometimes lead to, um, to these white matter lesions. And we also know that the migraine attack itself can be associated with low blood flow to the brain because you, you can vomit, you may not drink as much fluid, so there could be low blood flow in that situation as well. So, uh, so women, people have migraine without aura, and those that have more frequent migraines are those that um, are more likely to have these white matter lesions. And is there any evidence that people who have more severe migraine attacks or who've had migraine for a longer duration, like for more years, uh, are they more likely to have white matter lesions? Yes, people who have more longer duration of disease are also more likely to have white matter disease as well. So okay. That's true. Um, so my next question is, is are these lesions associated with memory loss or dementia or any other cognitive problems? That's a very common question because people are worried that, that they're mm -hmm. going to develop forgetfulness. And they've done several studies uh, over you know years and years. And, and, and basically, people who have white matter lesions are not any more likely to develop a dementia or memory problems than than the general population. They've also taken migraine patients with white matter lesions and done intensive, what they call neuropsychologic testing. Those, that's basically a battery of tests to, to check how well your brain functions. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the patients with white matter lesions um, perform identically to those that don't. So we don't think that white matter lesions predispose people to the future development of dementia or other memory problems. Yeah, I think that's a very important point to make because I think people get very nervous that that could be the case for them. So uh, I hope everyone heard that question and that answer. Um, my next question is, do you ever get concerned about any other illnesses related to white matter illness when you get an MRI back in a person who has white, white matter lesions, like multiple sclerosis or anything like that? Are there any other problems that you get concerned about? Um, very, the vast majority of times, I'm, t I'm talking about 99.9% .9 of the time, white matter lesions are not associated with any serious or ominous disease. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you have a real high burden of white matter lesions, and if they're in a certain location of the brain, the reading radiologist will often say that this could be consistent with what they call demyelinating disease or, or multiple sclerosis. So there are rare instances where it could be associated with MS, but I don't want people that see this to all of a sudden be worried that they've got MS because the vast, 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 vast majority of people just have migraine. Right. I think it's important to remember that about 35% of us with migraine that get an MRI show up with white matter lesions. Um, and so it's quite common. Um, do you feel it's necessary to get a follow-up MRI at any point later when white matter lesions show up? Not typically. Uh, we don't usually follow it up with, a, with an MRI. What's kind of interesting is they have done uh, MRI studies, you know, where they followed, done follow-up MRIs, and sometimes these lesions can go away. Mm -hmm. So they'll come and they'll go and so forth. So, uh, but we don't typically follow these with MRIs. They're just such, they just don't really mean much. Right. And does it influence uh, the treatment that you recommend for any of your patients when you see this? Not at all. I mean, it doesn't influence whether I put people on preventatives or which abortive meds we use. Uh, it does not influence our management uh, at all. Okay. And I think the most important question is, is should people worry if they get an MRI report back that shows white matter lesions if they have migraine? I don't think there's anything to worry about. Um, but what I would say is this, is if you've got high blood pressure, then make sure that that's well treated. If, you, if you're someone who's blacking out because you have low blood pressure, make sure, sure you keep yourself hydrated. Some people would wear support stockings. So the, the key thing is, is to basically to, to adequately you know, treat both high and low blood pressure. And then if this association with high frequency migraine is and white metal lesions is, is real, 
then make sure you get on an adequate preventative to decrease the frequency of your of your headaches. But the exact significance of these white matter lesions is probably not much. Um, they probably have very little consequence, at least as as we know it right now with uh, the the bulk of medical information. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to add to this topic of white matter lesions and migraine? No, other than, you know, I, I just don't think people should really worry about it too much at this point. And I think it's important to be knowledgeable about it, know what, what some of the causes can be, which groups are associated with white matter lesions, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't worry much about them at, at this point in time. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. And everyone, thank you for listening. And please join us again next week on Heads Up, the weekly webcast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation.